It's actually the same day that I just recorded the last video. John's home. We just got finished with dinner. Nora's had a bath. We're going to go talk about his mobile chicken coop. What's up, everybody? Um, this is our mobile chicken coop. Most of the research I've done on these, uh, a lot of people are using hay wagons. Um, unfortunately, the area that we're in, hay wagons in Missouri, seem to be going for a premium. And uh, selling for over $1,000, so we, you know, typically that's what you're seeing mobile chicken coops used as. And unfortunately, because it just doesn't make sense to spend $1,000 on a hay wagon, especially if we got to build something on top of it. Um, <laughs> so getting back, we ended up buying this trailer for $400. This trailer is 14 foot long and six and a half feet wide. Um, the lumber on it is only a year old. The decking boards are only a year old. Um, and all I had to do was cut one of them out and space them far enough apart where the actual chicken poop could fall through. Um, we went with this trailer just because... Like I was saying before, the hay wagons in Missouri are going for a thousand dollars plus, and then in Illinois they're around five six hundred dollars. But the amount of gas I'd burn up, and I don't like going to Illinois, so I didn't want to get one from there. But so we went this route, and thankfully this trailer was four hundred dollars. Um, there's no title, no lights. There, it is a tandem axle trailer, so it does have two um, two axles, which is nice. It's extremely overbuilt. I don't know what they were using it for. It was something with construction. Um, but it has two mobile home axles on it, which are rated at 6,000 pounds each. So this trailer technically would be a 12,000-pound trailer, which is a pretty decent size. But, you know, um, we're going to use it for the chicken coop, which, you know, it'll handle fine. So all this lumber is reclaimed lumber. It came from my parents' uh, back porch that they took down probably about a year ago. Um, so it's definitely overbuilt. <laughs> there are very few 2x4s on it. They're mostly 2x6s, 2x8s. There's a couple 2x12s up front. Um, we're going to put plywood on all the walls. We're going to leave a foot gap um, just for ventilation up top. The roof will probably be new sheet metal. Um, new We'll probably make it green to match our barn. Um, you can tell, screw the door. It's actually off their old back porch. That is. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, you know, Katie came up with a great idea. Once the screen gets punched out, which we know it will, we'll just replace it with chicken wire, which should hold. This door is actually made like a PVC frame, so it should weather pretty well out there. So the lock's pretty easy. Um, we're just, you know, we're right in the middle of building it. So, updates to come with it, but you're thinking about putting on steps yes, on the back for well me? steps. This had metal rails all along the sides of it, so we took off those metal rails, and, uh, now that I've started welding, or learning how to weld at work, I'll be able to weld a step on, really sturdy step, right on the back of it, which would make it easy to come in and out of. So... JJ. So with this though, we're thinking about, are you going to put the roost along the taller wall or the shorter wall? Because one is going to be the roost and the other one is going to be the nesting boxes, right? Oh, the nesting boxes, we'd have two on that wall and one on the back wall. Okay. Right? That's what you wanted. You wanted three well, sets of ten. Would it make sense to keep the roost on, like, the taller wall? Because... When you say roost, I'm going to run them from here to there. All oh. the way down. That's what that one guy did. What one guy? I can't think of his name. <laughs> He's out of New York State, though. We'll, we'll try to find his channel and drop it below. Yeah. But, he so... He actually built two of them. First one he didn't like, because... The floor was too close together. Like, I don't think... I think he left, like, a... Like, maybe a quarter of an inch gap or something like that. But as you can see, 
I mean, there's a big gap in all of so, them. So, the thought process behind the big gaps is for, like, sweeping it out and the, the chicken poop falling through. We shouldn't even have to do that on his videos. It just it just breaks up and falls off by itself. Well, just why the chicken's walking on it, or us even walking on it. So well, Just in case, we'll have a yeah. broom out here. Probably. And okay. I'm even using, this is, uh, my parents had a deck around their pool. And they replaced it with composite decking. And so this these old decking boards, which are just one buys, I'm gonna use as purlings, which you know are gonna go in between the rafters. What's the purling? The bars that go in between the rafters. So see. those are the rafters that he has put up. And a purling is gonna be connecting them all. Yeah, and then you connect the steel roof to the purling. Okay. The purling is a technical term for it, by the way. You would know, right? Yes, I do, especially <laughs> that kind of stupid stuff. So. so, tandem axle means it's two axles. Yes. And the lumber is probably worth more than the, the, lumber, <laughs> the trailer yeah, now. He only paid four hundred dollars for a trailer. He had it listed for five hundred, which I mean, it was worth it for five. And I couldn't believe he took four. And I said, I'll be there tomorrow with cash. I said I'll be there tomorrow with cash. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it worked out. So. I was happy to get rid of it. He was surprised. That, I think we all were surprised I was able to pull it out where it was. Yeah. Well, especially because it was raining. It was raining. And how heavy it is. And, yeah. Like, you couldn't shake it on the Yeah, we, Yeah, it was really weird. Normally, you know, like a trailer, I don't have a problem picking them up and moving around, but. You know, like, here's my 18-foot car hauler trailer, you know. You can pick that up. This one, it was, I don't know if it's because it was buried. <laughs> I could barely move it. Well, you've added on to it, too, but you were having a hard time then. Yeah. Well, which is crazy, because this is a 14-foot trailer compared to an 18-foot car hauler trailer. Tandem axles, both of them, you know. But this one's just, I don't know. So, I mentioned earlier in that video um, that we're using the scrap lumber, trying to clean up up here because we'll be potentially building a house within the like next yeah. or longer, depending on prices and stuff. But did you want to show them your lumber pile and like how you've been saving that stuff? Oh, yeah. I told him about the raised beds, and he found them on Craigslist. Yeah, the composite decking. So, this is what I have left on my lumber pile. Most of the lumber that I'm using came, was stacked, stored right here. It was off the ground. But we're going to be relocating, hopefully, in a couple of years across the farm. So, we need to start cleaning up and getting ready for the move. Um... We won't be storing any more stuff, um, figuring out what works here, taking it with us when we get over the, to the new farm. Uh, then we'll have room to expand, but right now we need to definitely clean up. Um, you know, I still got plywood. I got plywood over there. I got an old trailer that I need to do something with. Uh, we have panels for a greenhouse that work really well. And then we actually have windows for a greenhouse right over there. A lot of composite decking still. Trying to find a home for that. If not, we'll get rid of it. I forgot about the slide. Yes, we got a slide. We got we need to get rid of <laughs> um, old cedar logs that we we're gonna use for the fence, but we just probably just need to cut them up for firewood. Got a lot of poles left over from uh, my parents. Took down their fence in the back, and they're nice enough to let us have it. So I already built one gate with them. Um, I did find something else to use for these. Uh, I have a question for you. With that little trailer over here, could we, like, repurpose that for the goat tote? Yes, so, um, this is a small trailer. It's overbuilt also. This is my grandfather's. Really? Yeah, this is Bill's. I didn't know um, that. <laughs> so this is my yeah. grandfather's trailer. He used to use it for his ditch witch. That's what my father told me. Um... We are going to use this as a mobile chicken coop, but it was just it's way too small. too small. Like, I think it's eight foot long. Well, we which, also have like 60 chickens. Like, yeah, so at the time we didn't have very many chickens and it would have worked fine. But then we 
jumped up to like 30 or 40 and then we're like well this isn't going to work and then we hit 60 and we're like well we need something a lot larger and 60 seems to be a good number uh for us with chickens we can still manage and you know we have a lot of eggs we're able to sell what we have and take care of our family with the amount we have also so um you know instead of getting a horse trailer to transport our animals uh we're going to try to make this into a goat tote um basically it'll be a small cage an eight by i think this is six foot no five foot wide eight by five it doesn't have to be the exact size of the trailer but we can go eight by five and have a door back here this is a tilt bed which would be nice so we can just tilt it down to the ground and we wouldn't need a ramp to get the animals on they would just flow right on oh um, this is a three thousand pound axle on this because it was a ditch witch trailer and it had to hold you know quite a bit so are you gonna be like framing it in like a box yeah. or so right now i'm uh you know my job's teaching me welding skills and stuff like that so i'm debating whether to weld this in weld the box in or actual like just build a wooden box so if I welded it in, I think it would last a little bit longer. We wouldn't have to mess with it too much. But if we did buy that metal and I did weld it in, you know, it would be pretty permanent. So that would be the only downside. Just because some, a lot of the stuff that we're trying, I, you know, I'm like, I like to use decking screws just because they back out easy and they last longer. And it seems to not be as hard on the wood. So if it doesn't work, then I can take that apart and reuse all that stuff for something else. Because we're very big into reusing and repurposing on the farm. Trying not to waste our money. But we want to try it to see if it works. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I think I'm making Trish. I was talking to father. Mm -hmm. I'm in the I'm in the cookie. Cookie and ice cream? Yeah. No? <laughs>